Praise the Lord, church. If you can stand real fast, we're going to go before him in prayer. Just ask that his presence would be here this morning. How many of you are glad to be in the house of God this morning? Amen. Let's go before him in prayer. Oh, Lord God, we ask that your presence would be here in this house this morning, Lord God. We are thankful for another opportunity, Lord God, another privilege just to come before you and lift up your name. Because truly you are worthy to be praised this morning, Lord God. There's no one else like you. There's no one beside you, Jesus, that is worthy of our praise and all our adoration, Lord God. We give ourselves over to you this morning and ask that you would have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Sister Ante, continue to pray for Brother Duke's father, George. Continue to pray for Sister Joyce Jackson. Amen. The Lord will continue to be with her and comfort her. Continue to pray for her family as well. Amen. Remember Sister Christina Kendrick. The Lord will continue to touch and minister to her. Continue to pray for Sister Bike with her neck situation, shoulder situation. The Lord will give her peace and comfort through the pain. I know somebody mentioned something about some surgery coming up, so we want the Lord to, to be there. Amen. Our new request is, good to see Sister Edwards here, but she's needing a healing touch. I want the Lord to lift her up in prayer. Remember Tom Ewing, the brother-in-law of Brother Corky and Sister Simone, he needs a healing touch. Amen. We know God is able. And Ashley, the daughter of the cousin of Sister Denise Bond and Michelle, has COVID and is in the hospital. Amen. We need to lift her up in prayer. Uh, Megan Heideball, the sister-in-law of, of, of the daughter-in-law, sister-in-law, my bad. The, the daughter-in-law of Pastor Sister Hyderball has COVID as well. Amen. It's a, I'm pretty sure we can probably still have hands in here of someone who knows somebody that's battling COVID right now. Amen. It's come back with a little bit of a vengeance, but we got a God that's bigger. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sister Kayla. name is Andrew. Lift them up in prayer, Lord, we'll give them a healing touch. Amen. Yeah, continue to pray, lift up Sister Blackford for a healing and your daughter as well. Amen. Carol. Carol, lift up Carol as well. God is good. Amen. 
Bible says, who in his own self bore our sins in his own body on a tree that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. Amen. If you need prayer in your body, we have the oil. There's faith in this place. The ministry team is here. Amen. We'll, we'll anoint and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Amen. And that God will move. But right now, with the lift, uplifting of hand for those uh, special unspoken, let's lift up our hands. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you and we praise you, Lord. We come before you right now, Lord. Crawl, calling upon that name which is above every name, Lord Jesus. Praying, Lord, for you to touch, for you to move, and for you to minister, Lord, in each and every situation, Lord. You hold all power and authority over all things, Jesus, just by the very mentioning of your name, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your blood on Calvary, Lord. We pray and plead your blood upon every name here, Lord. Praying, Lord, for you to touch, Lord Jesus, to go into each and every room, Lord. Go to each and every place where they're at, Lord, and meet them, Lord, as you manifest yourself to them, Lord. Let your healing virtue flow, Lord, as we cry out unto you. For you are holy, Lord. We stand upon your word, Lord, that by your stripes we are healed, Lord. We cry out unto you, Lord. Just ask him, Lord, for that healing touch, Lord, for that virtue to flow, Lord. Lord, build up our faith, Lord. Be a provider for those, Lord, Lord, who are in need of provision, Lord. Jesus, we just pray, Lord, that your will, Jesus, be done in each and every situation, Lord Jesus. That you meet us where we're at, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for your love. We thank you for your grace, Lord. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for all that you do, Jesus. You're a mighty God. You're an awesome God, Lord. We declare your healing, Lord. We declare your power. We declare your glory, Lord. Jesus, upon each and every name lifted up here, upon each and every situation, Lord, we believe you for it, Lord. We declare your healing right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Lord, we declare your healing, Lord. We pray for those, Lord, that need salvation, Lord, that you set the captives free, Lord. Yes, Lord, let your grace abound, Lord Jesus. Lord, move, Lord, in only a way that you can, Lord. We declare it, Lord. We declare your victory here, Lord. We declare your victory, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, come on, let's lift him up. Let's declare that victory right now. Let's declare that victory right now over every situation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Mighty God. Yes, Lord. Mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated. Amen. Or have a... We have quite a few announcements here, amen. This Friday night at 545, if you are interested or know somebody wants to do Bible quizzing, we are starting a Bible quizzing team here at the church. Those that are interested at 545 here at the church, they will be having an information meeting followed by a Sunday school game night from 6 to 8. So if you want your kids to Bible quiz, I guess we need to ask them if they want a Bible. Amen. But uh, coach them along. Amen. They're going to be doing a Bible quizzing team, and then they'll be having this Sunday school. will be having a game night here at the church Friday night from 6 to 8. Then Saturday, out in Jacksonburg, we'll be having James and Ivana, a baby shower from 12 to 4. All are invited. That includes men as well. It's a, I forgot what you call it. They're going to come in, do what they got to do. Then, what's that? Open house. Amen. Uh, God is good, so all are invited for that. Uh, then don't forget our Butter Braid fundraiser for our youth fall retreat is happening now. So see a youth member that may have approached you about buying a Butter Braid. Would say stock up on them. They are pretty good. Amen. I recommend the apple, the cheese. Uh, they're pretty good. Amen. Also, October the 2nd. We are headed, oh, we're almost in October. October 2nd, we will be having our fall weekend outreach from 11 to 1, meeting here at the church. Not sure who's heading that up, but we'll be doing an outreach for our fall weekend, amen, which will begin on Friday, October the 15th, with prayer service here at the church at 6.30. Then that following Saturday on the 16th, we will be having our harvest party, which is at 3 o'clock. Invite somebody, amen. 
And on the 17th, we will be having revival services, services a.m. and p.m. with Vinny, brother Vinny Azzolini. Amen. Don't want, to miss, don't want to miss him. Fired up preacher. Preacher straight from the word. Amen. Invite somebody to come be a part of that. And then on the 31st, we will have our trunk or treat decorating contest. And I have bored you enough with announcements. Amen. They're in your bulletins. They're on the board. Amen. But this outreach, revival, amen, we need to be reaching as many people as we can, especially in this last days. Amen. And on that note, our ushers are going to come. We're going to talk and take up an offering. Amen. James 1 and 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Amen. We serve a mighty God. We truly cannot outgive God. God has been so faithful to us. Amen. Encourage everybody, man, to pay your tithes and your offering. You cannot go wrong. Amen. Lord, we love and we praise the Lord and ask that you bless this offering, Lord. Bless the tithe, Lord. Bless the giver. Lord, let it go forth for the multiplying Lord of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Let's not be sleepy on a Sunday morning, but let's have some inner energy in this place. Vamos a tener energía para el Señor Jesús en este lugar. Hallelujah. Jesus, we love you. We thank you, Lord. Let your presence increase in this place. Let your presence increase in this place. El Señor Jesús. Oh, aumenta su presencia en este lugar, Señor. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you reign, Lord. Come on, I can't get my mind off of him right now. Oh, hallelujah, you reign in this place, God. Tu eres el rey de reyes. Tu eres el señor de señores. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, there's Micronesians here this morning. There's Spanish speakers here this morning. God, let the Chinese come in. Let the Asians come in. Let the Filipinos come in. Every tribe, every nation, hallelujah, every tongue. If we can be the church, hallelujah, then we're going to see less racism in the world. Hallelujah, because Jesus said every tongue, every tribe, every nation, hallelujah, when he poured out the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, it wasn't for one group of people, but it was for all people. Woo, hallelujah. Come on, Jesus, just take over in here, God. What you want to do this morning, God, what you want to do, not what I want to do, but what you want to do. Okay, tú quieres hacer esta mañana, Señor, en este lugar, porque tú eres el rey de reyes, tú eres el Señor de señores. No hay nadie como tú. There's no one like you, Lord. What you want to do in this place, Lord? What you want to do in this place? Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. This is not my text this morning, but as I was driving to church, it was a morning full oh, of trial and struggle. I said, Lord, I'm supposed to preach this morning. What is going on? Oh, the battles. If you go to play in a church, let me tell you, I've had more trials and struggles and battles in six months than I had in six years. Because when you go to pull people out of hell, when you go to pull people from the pits of eternity, of fires, the enemy's going to stir it up. He don't like it. He don't like it when you pray. He don't like it when you fast. And he don't like it when you reach for that soul. Give me your hand. You need Jesus. Come with me. This Come with me. And this scripture just came on the radio. And it said, these things I have spoken unto you. That in me you might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Come on. I have overcome the world. I've had more car problems in two weeks than I've had in two years. I said, Lord, the enemy's coming through the vehicles because he don't want me to make it to Tuesday night Bible study and prayer. He don't want me to make it to Thursday night Bible study because I'm pulling for souls. I'm going to pull them. Hallelujah. You better get prayed up. You better get under the power of the Lord because if you're going to reach for the soul and you're not walking with God, that soul is going to begin to pull you. But if you're walking with God, you're going to pull that soul with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory a Dios. Come on. Jesus mueve en este lugar esta mañana. Yo quiero predicar, Señor, pero tú eres más grande. Y yo quiero seguir tu camino esta mañana, Señor. Hallelujah. I want to preach, but I want to follow his leading. I want to follow the leading of the Spirit this morning. So let's see if we can settle down a minute because I feel so much Holy Ghost right now. The power of the Lord is in this place. Come on, we can't just be a Sunday night church. We got to be an all the time church. We got to be a Sunday morning church. We got to be a Tuesday night church. We got to be a Wednesday night church. And we're about to have a Friday night prayer meeting before the fall festival.
festival. Can we be a Friday night church? Come on, I used to love the Friday night lights, high school football, Friday night lights. And yesterday, you think all these stadiums, hundreds of thousands of people worshiping a sport. Oh, I said, God, why can't we fill and have hundreds of thousands of people worshiping you? And he said, because we need the church people to be as hungry as these people. We need people that jump and shout and dance just like they do in the stadium. If you have your Bibles, Judges 6, 13 through 16. Judges 6, 13 through 16. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee. And thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. And I just want to share this thought this morning. The awareness of his increase. The awareness of his increase. Let's pray. Jesus, increase in here. Oh, your presence, God, would get stronger and stronger this morning and tonight, God. And that this place would be full of your spirit, God. That people would be set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Por el poder del Espíritu Santo en este lugar. Que personas van a ser libres, Señor. En el nombre de Jesús, rompe las cadenas. Break the chains, God, in this place. God, let people know that your presence is with them, that your presence is before them. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, in Jesus' name, you may be seated, but I hope you won't stay seated long today. Hallelujah. I'm going to do my best to deliver this and get out of the way and let God do what he wants to do. Hallelujah. But as we look at our world today, we can certainly say that we are living in hostile times. We are living in uncertain times, and we are living in evil and wicked times. Ephesians 6, 12 tells us, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The evil and the wickedness is rising up to God. And he is certainly preparing to come and rapture his church very soon. He is certainly showing that he is at the door. And he's ready to come get his church. But he patiently waits as the church reaches for soul after soul and the church stretches forth its hand to pull that soul from the grips of hell and the enemy himself revelations 3:20 says behold i stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice and open the door i will come into him and will sup with him and he with me we must have a heart that reaches for the soul to pull them from the grips of an evil tormenting fire that wants to destroy them forever. Come on this morning, can we leave here with a burden for souls? Can we leave here with a burden to reach and pull them from the grips of the enemy? We must live with that burning desire and that passion in our heart. Don't ever lose a passion or a burden for souls. It 
if you don't feel a burning desire, please be honest this morning. You don't need to tell me or tell pastor, but you need to ask yourself, do I really feel a, a burning passion for souls? Do I really feel a burden or am I just here putting in my time and my duty? If you don't feel that burning desire to reach for souls, then you know that's not a good place. Because to be in love with Jesus this morning means you love what he loves. You love what he loves. You will love the soul of a man or a woman that needs to be delivered from a tormenting eternity. If you've been consumed with inreach, and yes, we need inreach. But it's time to say, God, help me and give me a burden for outreach. Give me a burden for a soul that doesn't know you to have success in outreach. Then we must become aware of his presence at all times. We must have an awareness of his increase in our lives. We can become dull in our spiritual senses. Oh, and the enemy can rock us to sleep if we're not careful. But it's the hour to wake up. Oh, it's the hour to wake up and have some urgency and to have an intentional purpose of reaching for the soul, reaching for the hurting, reaching for the addicted, reaching for the bound up soul that's stuck in chains and in bondage. But hear me out, because... A lot of soul winning and reaching for people is preached in condemnation. If you feel condemned, you're not going to want to do it. But if you fall in love with the Lord, if you fall in love with the Lord, then it's not, it's not an exercise. It's not hard to do. Somebody just shows up and somebody starts to ask you a question. Oh, hallelujah. A couple weeks ago I was teaching and it was a Friday afternoon and this girl said, can I be a Christian in my classroom? Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost. That's not by accident. And the boy next to her said, you sure can be. But what did she say? I want to be a Christian, but I don't know my dad. And my mom lives crazy. And then she started to talk about the way her mom dresses. Let me tell you something, women. Don't get tired of doing what you're doing because it's a witness and it's a testimony. Hallelujah. They see the difference. They see it. But it can't be a burden to you. I better get off of that. Oh, help me, Lord, this morning. Oh, your focus this morning is not just reaching for the soul, but to have an awareness of his increase. And as you become more aware of the Lord's presence, then you will become more aware of the souls around you. And you will become more sensitive to their need and the cry that comes from their hearts. We are living in times where we must have an awareness of his increase in our lives. It's not an increase of material gain or financial gain or an earthly gain, but it's a gain of his presence. As our world becomes ever increasingly hostile, we can count on God to show up more. <laughs> We can be sure that the Lord's not going to abandon us in such hostile times, but he's going to show up in an increasing manner. His presence will grow stronger and stronger. However, there's one issue, one problem that's facing the saints of God in this hour, and that issue is the voices that are around us that are trying to drown out the voice of the Lord. In our lives. While we may be facing a troubling issue in our day, we must decide that there is an ever pressing need to have more awareness of His increase. If we focus on the news or politics or the negative people that we encounter at work, in our schools or our family, we will be led to believe that His power and His presence is fading away. Come on, you know it. At work, gossip is. It's there. 
If you get, tra- if you get stuck in that, guess what? That's going to bleed over into your church life. Come on. Come on, you better be careful what you let come into your church life. You come here and bring in things from work. We better shut it out. We better say, Lord, make me a Holy Ghost vessel at work. We don't have the students in here this morning. Whew. Teach a bunch of high school kids and you'll start worrying about it, the way you look all the time and everything. I said, my goodness. I said, these kids worry about every little thing, but they need the Holy Ghost. Because we got to get our minds off of ourselves and our minds on the Lord. Hallelujah. This is why the Lord wants us to live like spiritual people. Because as spiritual people, as godly people, as people of the name, we don't take our direction from what's around us. But we take our direction from who is inside of us and who is in spiritual authority over us. Come on, you better get a love for your pastor. You better get a love for your pastor. You better get a love for the leadership of the church. Because I know it. I hear what people say about the bosses at work. If you get caught up in talking about your boss at work, what's going to happen in church? yourself from the spirits that are around you but be bring the Holy Ghost with you and you begin to affect the place we live our lives differently the Lord has not called us to live like those around us or take their direction from news analysts or from political analysts or sports analysts or the so called gurus of the day there's only one Who knows what's going to happen. And there's only one that has the real news. And knows what's going to happen. And take place in our world. The voices of the world can only ever speculate. They cannot speak truth. And the truth is not in them. The truth comes from the one who is the way. The truth and the life. And his name is Jesus. What are you believing as truth right now? What voice are you believing as truth? What voice are you listening to? If you want truth, then you're going to have to get down to business with the Lord. You're going to have to decide that I want more awareness of His increase in my life. He will increase in your life if you decide that you want an increase. But he's saying if you want an awareness of my increase, then you're going to have to push away other voices because these voices are drowning out his voice in your life. A couple weeks ago, on the way to work and the way home, the Spirit of the Lord entered my car. And I began to weep. And I said, wow, this is powerful. I said, I want more of this. I said, I really, really love this. We've got to desire those moments. Pastor and I were talking this morning how God just reaches into his car. Hallelujah. He has those moments. Some of you, the car may be the most awesome place for you. I don't know. But man, we need more moments of the increase. Oh, of his presence. Because what happened after that moment? Something bad happened. I said, where did you go, Lord? (laughs) Come on, let's be honest. The Lord shows up. He surrounds us with his presence. And something bad happens. We say, where did you go, Lord? What was Gideon doing? The Lord has abandoned us, he said. But the Lord was getting ready to show up. We got to understand a spiritual principle here. There's times when the Lord's going to take away our resources. <laughs> Why? Because He wants the glory. It may look like you are against all odds, and you say, God, how do you take everything away from me and expect me to win and expect me to get a victory? Because the Lord wants the glory in your life. Hear me out this morning. If he didn't take things away sometimes, it would lead to you thinking that you're the one that did it. 1 Corinthians 1, 27 
through 29. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Why? Why? Because no flesh should glory in His presence. Hallelujah. We got to get our flesh under subjection. Hallelujah. To be used by the Lord in music and preaching and praying for people and teaching Bible studies and reaching for people. Then we got to get our flesh under subjection. God is never going to allow you to think that you have the power to control a situation or determine an outcome because he's the one that has the power. Yes, the power of the Holy Ghost is in you, but that power comes from him and not you. You didn't fill yourself. He filled you. Come on, think about our doctrine. Yes, they laid Jesus in that tomb. Oh, yes, when you get baptized, somebody lowers you down. But who raised him from the dead? Oh, hallelujah. He, oh, who, who raised him from the dead? Come on, you don't feel yourself. He feels you. He wasn't going to let Gideon get the glory. The Lord took Gideon from 32,000 to 300. How could he win this battle with only 300 men? How could he even have a chance to think there would be a victory? This is exactly why Gideon thought the Lord had abandoned him. This is what happens to us. The Lord removes something. We go through a trial. It seems like we're against all odds. God, where are you? Why have you abandoned me? He hasn't abandoned you. We need an awareness of his increase. Hallelujah. It's our human nature to think that God has abandoned us. But as we mature in the Lord, we begin to understand this is how God operates. And I'll be honest, I struggle with this, but I got a wife over here. God is with you. God didn't abandon you. I hear her all the time. It just takes a little while to set in. <laughs> Come on. We need a wife. Or wives, you need a husband. Said, the Lord's with you. The Lord hasn't abandoned you. Amen. Come on. You may feel like they're just chirping in your ear. They're driving you crazy, but they're speaking truth. Right, Mary Faye? She's up there translating. <laughs> She's got that Hispanic Latino energy, man. I can't keep up with her. I said the Latinos got something different in their blood, man. They can work 20 hours a day and sleep for four. It's it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> right? I was like, I've never seen an energy like Latino energy, man. Mary Faye will come home. She's still working. Oh, my goodness. She never rests. <laughs> Amen. But we got to understand God's working all things out, right? He's just removing our ability to try and take the glory. He's just showing us that He is God. He's just showing us, hallelujah, that we must stay in a place of dependence on Him. <laughs> if you will to stay dependent on God throughout your life, then you will always be successful in your walk with God in your spiritual life. It's when people think they don't have to depend on God anymore that they get themselves in trouble. There was one difference between Saul and David. It was Saul didn't depend on God. But David depended on God every minute. Read the Psalms. The Psalms, you can just hear David's cry. You can just hear his dependence on the Lord. And sometimes he was just honest. Where have you gone, Lord? Where are you at, Lord? But the Lord is my strength and my source. He is my substance. He is my life and joy. He is the fountain that I draw from. He is my comfort and He is my peace. He is my strong tower 
And he's the rock that I stand on. He is the river of life. In my strong confidence, he is my king and he is my Lord. He is my redeemer. He is my savior. He is my provider. He is my sustainer. He is my everything. Come on. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. If you're not in the presence of the Lord, there's a reason you don't have any joy. But if you can get into the presence of the Lord, the joy of the Lord will come over you. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. We don't live for happiness. We live for joy. I heard a preacher say one time, yeah, you can buy your children's happiness. You can buy your children's happiness for a moment. But as soon as the next new, big, wondrous toy comes along, they're not happy anymore. We need joy. Teach your children about the joy of the Lord. Because the joy of the Lord will sustain you. The joy of the Lord will make you more aware, oh, of His increase, oh, of His presence in your life. We think the more trials we have, that the less joy we're going to have. But it doesn't work that way. The more you fight through, the more the joy comes in your life because you remain dependent on Him. Come on, you better start praying. I know we don't want to pray this way, but Lord, make me dependent on You. I know you're going to have to fight through things. I know the trials and the struggles are going to come, but Lord, make me dependent on You. First Peter 4.12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice, and as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. In order to depend on God, you're going to have to have an awareness of His increase. You may say, where is God? But He's there. You're just not aware of His presence. Those that live more in a state of awareness of God's presence tend to live with more victory. They tend to live with more spiritual success. And they tend to have more joy in their lives. But you got to pray the dangerous prayer. Because when you pray the dangerous prayer, it's going to take effort. Because if you pray, Lord, lead me to somebody today, he's going to lead you to somebody. But you got to talk to him. you got to witness to him. you got to give him a word from the Lord. Come on. You can push. You can teach a Bible study one night a week. Come on, come on, Lord, lead me to somebody. Oh, I used to get so frustrated. Lord, I'm not bringing anybody to church. And we'll start beating ourselves up over that. I don't bring a lot to church, but I'm teaching them in Bible studies. Come on, we got to say, Lord, I can give up another night of the week for you. Come on. Come on, I want to teach a Bible study. Pray those prayers. He'll open that door because I got tired. I said, I'm not bringing anybody to church. Lord, I'm not teaching Bible studies. I want to teach a Bible study. And now we're teaching two Bible studies, Tuesday and Thursday nights to the Spanish. We had five on Tuesday night. Come on, pray the prayer. Don't be afraid of it. But your flesh isn't going to like it. Your flesh is going to have to sacrifice. Your flesh is going to have to give up time. Gideon believes the Lord has abandoned him. But the Lord is there in silent times. But you must trust he's there. And you need an increase of his presence. Judges 6, 11, and 12 says, There came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah. 
that pertained unto Joah, Joash, the Abias, Abias right, Abias right. However you pronounce that word. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press. He threshed wheat by the wine press, not the wheat press. What was he trying to do? He was trying to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. So Gideon was doing whatever it took to survive. Gideon had a warrior spirit. But what he didn't know was he needed an increase of God's presence. And some of you have been getting back up since you were a child. Some of you have been fighting through everything. But some of you are relying on your own strength to fight those battles. And God said, yes, you have a warrior spirit. But it's time to have an increase of my presence in your life. Because you can't win these battles in your flesh. You can't win these battles in your own spirit. Own strength. It's going to take the strength of the Lord. But I want to show you a couple things here before I close. Verse 25 and 26. Because if you will make a decision to have an increase of the Lord's presence in your life and you'll make a decision to say, Lord, I want to be more aware, this is what's going to happen. Verse 25, and it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father hath, and cut down the grove that is by it, and build an altar unto who? The Lord thy God, upon the top of this rock, in the ordered place. Take the second bullock and offer a burnt sacrifice with the wood of the grove, which thou shalt cut down. There's two things that are going to happen. I'm going to read 28 in a minute. But if you will get an awareness of his increase in your life, the Lord will begin to say, cut that down. Cut that down. Get rid of that. Replace it with me. Replace it with me. Come on. We got to get an attitude that what the Lord wants for me is better. It might not feel good right now to my flesh, but the, what the Lord wants is better. So what happened? Baal's altar was torn down. Go to verse 28. It shows you right here. When the men of the city arose early in the morning, behold, the altar of Baal was cast down. Who's ready to tear down some altars to the world and the enemy this morning? Who's ready to get rid of some voices that are hindering you this morning? God will lead you to hungry souls, but you must come and receive an awareness of his increase this morning. He's ready to give you an increase of him, but you must free up space in order to gain the awareness. Verse 31, Joash Gideon's father and Joash said unto all that stood against him will you plead for Baal will ye save him he that will plead for him let him be put to death whilst it is yet morning he makes fun of him here if he be a god let him plead for himself because one hath cast down his altar what does the increase of his presence do it begins to inspire others. Gideon inspired his father. Faith is contagious, but fear is also contagious. If we want the faith that we need in this last hour, then we're going to need an increase of his presence. Oh, come on. To be a good warrior, you better become a good worshiper. Private devotion. Private devotion. Private devotion leads to public Victory. Private devotion. I don't like getting up at 4.45 in the morning, but right now I don't have a choice because I've got to get into his presence. I've got to know him. I cannot lead the Spanish if I don't spend time with him, if I don't hear from him. It is time that you get up and you say, God, I've got to hear from you today. God, I've got to have your presence in my life. (laughs) 
We can conquer land and territory. And I believe in the name of Jesus, we're going to conquer this land. We're going to conquer this territory. And if it's going to be before there's a building. God is ready to do it right now. But if you're going to be a warrior for God, before you're a warrior, you must be a worshiper. Battles are won because there is worship before the battle. There is an increase of His presence. Will you desire an increase of His presence this morning? Will you desire Him this morning? God, increase your presence in my life. We need more moments with Him. I'm going to close. I, I just I'm not, I'm not going to go through the rest. Musicians, if you can come. Read chapter 7 for homework. Come on. Who's a teacher in here? Read chapter 7 for homework. I don't have the video, but I wish I had the video this morning of when the army of Israel, before they would go out to battle. This is present day. Before they would go out to battle, they would play the music. Brother Crosley, down in Miami, Florida, he's a Spanish pastor. He showed his church this video. And the Israelite army, just recent, before they would go out to battle, they would have their flag, and they would be singing unto the Lord, and they would worship, and they would dance, and then they would go out to battle. Come on, you're trying to go into battle without an increase of his presence, without an awareness of where he's at and what he's doing. Let's all stand. Come on, there's hurting souls. We, we don't want to think about it. We just, we just delete it from our mind. We don't picture them. And the flames are at their heels. And we, don't, we delete it from our mind. Because it's too hard to think about. It's too scary to think about. And I know a preacher that prayed for God to show him what really happens. And I wouldn't suggest praying that prayer, and I haven't prayed it. But we've got to begin to reach for them. Come here, soul. Come out of the flames of the fire that wants to torment you. Come with me. Jesus is waiting for you. But if you go to reach and you have not been in his presence, that soul is going to begin to is going to begin to pull you. Come on. You can't fight spiritual battles if you haven't been in His presence. God is calling us to make disciples. But before we make the disciples, saying, get in my presence. Get in my presence. Because you won't have to work so hard. I didn't ask that girl if she wanted to be a Christian. She just blurted it out in class. How does that happen? How do I walk to the YMCA in Hamilton and a lady shows up on the doorstep of the YMCA and wants to get baptized? And the guy in the pool says, I've never seen that before. Yeah, because the apostolics got some power that God has given them. It's not because of me. It's not because of Pastor, Elder, Sister Lyle, Brother Blackford, the Howards, any of you here. It's because of him. It's because of his power that rests inside of us. Get a hold of his power this morning. Get a hold of, the, of his presence and the awareness of his increase. Let's pray. Jesus, help us this morning, God, as we come to this altar. God, as we come to this altar this morning, God, help us get a hold of you. Help us, God, to tear down altars. Help us, God, to remove voices that don't need to be in our lives, God. Oh, help us, God. Help us, God. Help somebody make a decision this morning. I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to walk with the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. These altars are open. If you want to make a decision this morning that you want an increase, Oh, of His presence in your life. If you want to be more aware 
of his presence in your life. These altars are open. Hallelujah. Fire down in my soul that I can't. 